Welcome back gamers, it's your boy Oval coming at you with another excellent tutorial. Now I normally do Destiny vids, but today I thought we'd do something a bit different. So this here be Phasmophobia. I'm going to walk you through how to solo your ghosts with zero evidence and try to pull the most money from your rounds. So let's break it down. To start out with, your loadouts are going to need at least one video camera, an EMF reader, three photo cameras, four candles, two crucifixes, four lighters, motion sensor, parabolic mic, three salt, four sanity pills, four smudge sticks, and that's it. Uh, now I do have an old loadout, so I might bring a few things that aren't really all that necessary. As long as you have all that, uh, you're gonna be fine. Custom settings are important here as well. Um, as far as the player goes, uh, your starting sanity is gonna have to be at zero. Uh, this is well, this, this is just for the money, basically. Sanity pill restoration is going to be at 50%. So once you start in, you well, you're only going to want to take one sanity pill and go in. Um, and that's going to tell us right away if it's going to be, well, what kind of, well if it's a Deegan or, uh, some, or a Shade. Uh, sanity drain speed, uh, we're going to leave that 200%. That's actually the same percentage that the sanity drains at nightmare difficulty. Uh, but of course you can change it if you want to, uh, but I'm just going to leave it at 200. Sprinting I leave on just so that I can get these done. Uh, you know, I can run them back to back in, in a fast manner. Sprint duration I leave at 3 seconds. Sprint recharge for time I kept it up to 6. So, I mean, I only really, I, I, there's no real reason to be running all over the place anyways. Player speed just leave that at 100. Um, flashlights, turn that off and just turn your brightness all the way up and you should be fine. You have to keep this on in order to get any money, lose items on death. Uh, ghost speed, we leave that at 100. You can mess with that, but I mean, I've tried it a few times. It's going to be difficult to ascertain what kind of ghost you're dealing with. Uh, because I use a ghost speed while it's hunting uh, as an indicator as to what kind of ghost it is. Uh, roaming frequency, we keep that at low. Only because, uh, well, that's going to be when it decides to leave the, the ghost room. You know, we don't. you don't want to think it's another ghost maybe like twins or something because it's doing things in different rooms so we keep that at low although it does make trying to figure out if it's a gorio or not a little difficult uh it's best to just keep that at low gorios can't ever leave their ghost room so Ch that being said changing favorite room uh that is set to low as well just because you don't want to go everywhere trying to figure out you know having to change rooms and that kind of thing uh interaction amount we leave that at medium uh, just so that it actually does do stuff, uh, but you don't want to set to high either, just in case it's a uh, ghost like uh, like a poltergeist, uh, lowers your sanity by throwing things, and uh, you know you already got enough stuff going up against you, and you just need to make sure everything is uh, is where you what would want it to be, and that's also why I keep the event frequency to low because every time the ghost does something like uh, when it ghost orb event uh, or when it appears, it lowers your sanity by quite a bit. Be sure to throw off your reckoning if you're trying to guess what kind of guess, uh, ghost it is, because a lot of this is going to be a lot of guessing. From the ghost, you have to leave that off if you want to make any money. I keep the grace period as low as I can. Two seconds is not a lot of time, but it gives me enough time to pull out my uh, smudge stick if it starts hunting on top of me. Uh, hunt duration, we leave that on high. It's very similar to uh, um, nightmare difficulty. And, of course, the evidence given is zero on these runs. Um, there's also an option on here to... If the ghost continues hunting after getting the kill, you can keep that on. I personally don't have it on because uh, if I'm playing with my friend, then, uh, you know, if he dies, I don't want to have to worry about also having to hide and that kind of thing. Now, Nightmare Difficulty, that is how it's set, but you don't get any additional money for doing it, so I don't do it. It is, of course, personal preference. Contract, uh, I always keep the set setup time at zero because, again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a sanity pill. One sanity pill, get my sanity up to 50, and I'm going to head on in. Um, some ghosts will haunt right away, like a fae uh, or a demon. Um, There's, of course, a few other ghosts as well, but if it doesn't start hunting until you're down below 35%, you can uh, automatically assume it's either a Shade, a Mimic, and in my experience, also a Dagon, although there are small exceptions to that rule as well. Um, whether uh, I keep it at random. You do get more money for having it on... Uh, rain like heavy rain but after a while that can get a little irritating so i keep it at random just to make things more interesting uh keep the door starting open on medium 
I mean, you get the same amount of money if it's on high or medium, but at medium, at least not every single door is open in six different ways. Number of hiding places, you're going to want to keep that low. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, if you're in a situation where there are no hiding spaces, I usually just make it hunt once and then get out. Or maybe not even at all, depending on what kind of ghost it is. It can really uh, mess up your luck, basically. Sanity monitor, you are going to have to leave on as uh, you are going to have to take a look at your sanity every now and then to figure out what kind of ghost this is. Uh, that's one of those instances where on Nightmare that is also off, but in this instance it's going to be impossible to figure it out. A Nightmare, you get two different pieces of evidence, so it is possible to do it that way. Activity monitor, you don't need on, so you just leave that off. Fuse box is the start of a contract, I leave that on, only so it's, I don't have to worry about trying to find it uh, while the ghost is hunting me at the start. Um, and again, I'm I, I don't have flashlights on, so having that on, um, it's only like a 0.1 difference. You can leave it off and just go and look for it, but uh, you're probably going to survive a little bit better with just by leaving that on. And then, of course, you can leave the fuse box visible on map off. Cursed possessions, I have one left on, um, just so that if I need to drain all my sanity super fast, then I have a way to do that. And, of course, it's set to random. Now, of course, you can set the fuse box there's an option on here to set the fuse box to just be broken i would not recommend doing that as that is uh, another indication to like if it's a gin for instance i will never turn the fuse box off uh but of course uh that is entirely up to you i'm gonna leave that on um so yeah let's uh let's uh let's get into hunting some ghosts here all right we're just gonna load into some tanglewood drive um I mean, realistically, you can use this method on any ghost and uh, come out on top. But uh, with some simple rules to live by. First, you just look at the what we have to do: cleanse the ghost, smudge, detect the presence with the, sm uh, with the motion detector, have a member of your team witness a ghost event. Okay. So first thing you bring with you is a camera, smudge stick, and you're gonna take one sanity pill. It's gonna bring that up to 50%. Uh, or about 50%, you're gonna take one lighter with you to light the smudge stick. <clears throat> if the ghost starts to hunt. All right, we're ready to game, gamers. All right, we're gonna go ahead and open this door. And uh, let's take a look here. That door is open, it might be feasible. We're going to have to kind of book it through here. See if that is good. That is good. That is awesome. That is the place to hide. You're listening. There's a door to close, which it's about to do. It's probably going to start hunting here. That's good. It is throwing stuff. We might be looking at a poltergeist. No, it might not be a poltergeist, but I mean, poltergeists tend to throw things more than any other kind of ghost. There's some ghosts that like to touch doors, but it's throwing the same photograph that. No, it does not necessarily mean it's a poltergeist. If it is, if it was a poltergeist, it should have already hunted. That being said, let's look at the door again. All right, we have a cursed mirror. That's good. Let's take a picture of that. Just uh, we're not really looking at getting a whole lot of photographs here. In this instance, uh, the main, mo the the most amount of your money is going to come from, uh, well, basically just. Uh, the main, the main amount of your money is going to come from uh, doing the objectives since there's a 9 point, well for me there's a 9.35 multiplier. If you have any similar settings you're going to have a very similar uh, multiplier here. Okay, so so far it's thrown a few items. I've actually seen Deegan's do this. where They, they are fairly active ghosts, but so are Ani's. Um, and even Shades can be active if you're the only person in the room. Um, I just looked at my sanity just to make sure I wasn't crazy and I don't think I was close enough for it to impact my sanity uh, when it was throwing those items but Poltergeist lowers your sanity by about 2% on average for every object that it throws um, which is why it likes to throw stuff um, but I didn't see that it, that was the case so I don't know if I was close enough if it is a Poltergeist but realistically Poltergeist hunt was in about that same time period as um as uh as pretty much any other ghost oh that's big okay, there's a lot of openings here or well there's a lot of hiding spots oh, that's even bigger let's go ghost you always want to make sure you find the bone if you can 
one of the bigger maps. I don't want to go down there just yet. Uh, it, there is a good chance this is either a Shade or a Dugan. Uh, I, I say that one because it hasn't hunted yet. Typically in these instances, you just want to run right on in and try to find a place to hide. Now this might be an easy one here uh, because it hasn't hunted yet. The game developers, and I, I actually haven't found this on any wiki, so maybe this will help you out. Uh, I think when they first introduced this ghost, a lot of people were dying from it because they were hiding and it was just it could see you through walls. Um, so I think they they let it hunt at a very much more reasonable like time frame, about around the same time frame as like a shade would, for instance. All right, that's pretty good. Uh, if it start, hunts, starts to hunt and it turns the breaker off, it can't be a gem. But basically, I'm going to use this countertop to loop it if it is a Dugan, which we should be getting pretty close to that. I don't want to turn the light off because I want to be able to see what I'm doing. I'm gonna, I am going to have to loop it here. Uh, there's a strong chance that it's a different ghost. I'm going to probably make my way to the garage as I have it come left and I'm gonna loop it around here and just go straight so that's my pathway. It's always good to have a plan when you're running from the ghost but I mean just like any game map awareness is a big factor here. I do want to hunt I guess I could drop my camera but I don't want to drop my camera because if I could get a picture of it here that'd be pretty big actually. This ghost is still not hunted yet. We're gonna go check our sanity in the in the truck. It should be pretty low by now. Um, let's see here. Yep, it's at about 43%. If this was pretty much any other ghost, then uh, oh, it should have already hunted. I I think I am gonna try to turn the lights off just so our sanity goes down a little bit more. We might have enough light if I just turn this one on, I think, and just turn that one off. So that way I'm, I am in the darkness here and uh, it, it will start hunting. Or we'll hopefully it'll start hunting a little sooner because, oh, just turn the lights off. Did it turn, oh, turn the breaker off. Okay, so that is a little annoying. That can happen, that's all right. So right away when it does that, we know it's not a gin because gins do not turn the breaker off. But I think we kind of already knew that since gin probably would have already hunted us by now. We'll go ahead and cross that off the list since we know it. Gins don't do that. Every ghost has its own individual uh, little thing about them. I'll chuggle over them with you here after this uh, so hopefully you get a little bit more knowledge. Typically in this situation I'd probably start stacking plates and objects in piles of three uh you know some it's just a little easier to know if it's a poltergeist or not because poltergeists have an ability where they'll explode a pile of objects and that just uh, increases the probability of that happening rather than having just like one giant pile of objects you have like multiple piles of three or more objects i've only ever seen it do at one time before but and it's difficult to really know if it's a poltergeist or not unless Ooh, that one got me a little bit. I thought it was hunting, and I was trying to figure out where. And then the, it just blew out all these lights. Ooh, that one kind of got me a little bit. <laughs> so, I don't normally get got by this game, but that one got me. Normally with a little laughter like that. Yeah, this is definitely... Now it could be a shade. If it's a shade, once it gets within about, like from the countertop to me here, about that distance, that's when we'll know if it's a, it's a Dugan or not. Because other, if it is, then it'll just go super slow. I'll be able to just walk across this like so. Now if it's a shade, it will not slow down and I'll have to be super quick about using this smudge stick here. So, you know, it's kind of a little bit of being able to Wait for it. Now what I don't want it to happen is for it to spawn right on top of me, which is what I thought it just did. Uh, I had that happen uh, on another video I was doing. I was trying to do something very similar to this, but uh, it just it didn't turn out right, so we're redoing it here. But that's all right, I don't, I don't mind. Let's 
give me more money. It's just the anticipation sometimes really kills me. Really, I really do think this is a Dugan. These ones, they tend to hunt. They don't hunt as frequently as Shades do, which is pretty crazy when you think about it. But that, that again, is a game developer thing. So that way you have enough time to get your evidence. I don't think that's a hunt. Oh, I could have taken a picture of it. Well, anyways. But the game developers did that so that way you had a chance to get your evidence and get out before it started killing everyone. I can't find anything on a wiki about it though, but every time I've had a Dugan, it's hunted under the 35% mark, which normally you might think that's a shade, but uh, not in this instance. Oh, and before we really do that, I do want it to hunt, but I am going to have to bring a video camera in here just to make sure it's not a mimic. Mimics are probably going to be the easiest. It's starting to break her off again. It's a little dangerous. I'm going to have to go down there again. I really do need to be able to see through for this. Which is the only risky part about having no flashlights. That's okay. I got $23,000. It's not like I need all of it. That's not even really all that much money, but I don't play the game a whole lot. But I do know how to do these solo runs. At least I know how to do these solo runs in the fastest method possible. I just chose a super easy map, this map, just to give you a feel for things. It's pretty much the same thing on every map. Now, if you know you're dealing with a Dugan, uh, and you don't really, if you can't think of a way to loop it, it's probably best to bring in another smudge stick and just have it laid out because you're going to have to try to loop it as best you can. There it is. It is hunting from the Not very fast. Not a Dugan. Might be a shade. I'm just trying to get a picture of it. How am I able to loop it? Look at that. They want to be. Alright. Well, I, I did end up having to use my smudge there. What I am going to do. Gosh, I can't see anything. You see, this is what I'm talking about. Okay. Could be a shade. Um, I didn't actually see it change form. I have had this happen to me one time before. I am just going to, just for our benefit here, I went ahead and started a timer. When you do this, it is good to have like a stopwatch or something on you. So once you activate a smudge, um, if it's a spirit, it will hunt again within it'll prevent a hunt within three minutes i had a spirit the last time i did this super easy to figure out it might not be exactly three minutes because i'm not exact on that i'm just trying to get to a spot where i can hide um actually instead of hiding in here i think i do want to get out and get a video camera if i can find my way out of here uh, if it's a demon, it'll be within 30 seconds. The only reason I say I want to get out of here and get a video camera is because, well, if the hunt's again, I mean, it could be a mimic and uh, it was taken in the form of a shade or Dugan or maybe a shade. Uh, in that instance, it's probably going to be like uh, not a great thing if it turns into one while I'm trying to uh, figure out what kind of ghost it is. But as you can see, being able to loop it right that means it's not a haunted, it's not a fake. Oh my goodness, can't see a dang thing. I hope it didn't see me go into this locker here. Nope. Looks like I'm in the clear. Now that was a Dagon. It would have uh, killed me. So, I mean, we already knew it wasn't that. Uh, that hadn't been three minutes yet since I uh, blasted it, so it's not a spirit. I wasn't able to see any ghost orbs, so it's not a mimic. And it looked to be going at about the same speed. Let's see if I got it, that ghost picture with it. If I did. And since the ghost is actually in corporal form here, uh, we can rule out a phantom. Although, phantoms probably would have. I'm going to go with shade on this, and then I'm just going to call this good. Um, I think we've got... Can I open this door? 
think we've got everything we really need. I mean, as far as... Oh, I didn't realize it was crashing there. I have a different hotkey to another game, but that's fine. All right. Oh, we're getting pretty lucky here, actually. So what else do we need? We need a uh, tech presence motion detector. Okay, so this is why we have the extra ones. In some instances, we actually might need more. But uh, in this instance... If it is a, I think we'll just leave it at 50. We don't really need, uh, well, let's see. Nope. Uh, where is it? Oh, there we go. And that's why we bring this is in case we have one of these little objectives that we need to do. We'll go ahead and, uh, just bring this with us, which is also another reason. Now, if, uh, we weren't so, if I wasn't so certain as to what kind of ghost this was, then I'd say, uh, you know, we'd probably do a few other tests as there's a lot of tests to perform. So what we're going to do here is, uh, let's see, started hunting from the basement, started hunting from this room this time. So that right, I like right there. And it's come through here a few times. We're going to like this. So a few ghosts will prevent you or will impact your sanity. Uh, even if you have a candle with you. Now, uh, as long as you have a candle with you and it's lit, um, the ghost is going to impact your sanity, which is the best way to do Nightmare. And it's the best way to do modes like this uh, if you're not trying to get it to kill you. Uh, so if you if you have an idea as to what kind of ghost this is, like for instance, I think this is a Jade. If that theory is correct, then it will not hunt me. Uh, because it'll never hunt me so long as I have this on. Uh, the only way it's going to be able to is if it does like a ghost event, which is set to low, where it appears, or if it, uh, you know, just breaks lights, you know, those kind of ghost events. Uh, really just kind of want to go through this motion sensor, which doesn't look like it's really doing. So, I'm trying to think if I need to maybe move it. Try this wall. That doesn't work. Is this thing on? That's ah, working. I was wondering why it wasn't going off before. Well, we might have to move it further down the wall. There, maybe? Let's try that. Uh, I first started hunting down in the garage. I'm wondering if maybe, I, or and down in the basement. I might have to move it down there. So I kind of thought this was the ghost room because of all the stuff it was throwing. But now, now let's see if it does something. Can you give me a sign? Suppose I could look at the mirror. I don't know if it changed rooms or it's just not really moving around or what's going on with this ghost. Suppose it could be in a garage. Let's see here. I put it right there. Sometimes it's just trial and error of these things. Come on, go through the motion detector. Still have not done. I actually haven't heard it do anything either. Come to think of it. I think I am gonna do that just for time sakes. Gonna drain my sanity a little bit here. In the basement. So he, it is in the basement. Alright, that drained twenty percent of my sanity, so I think it is an onion range now, so I'm gonna take another sanity or did I, I think I may have taken two. Yeah, but it did drain. It is an honey. Drain. Okay, so now it's not. So we're good. Again, another good reason to have that at fifty percent. Uh, did it turn? No. All right, we're gonna have to move that motion sensor and bring it downstairs. That's all right. Bring that bad boy down here. Let's see. And it was about around all this nonsense. So. Got to push down there. Come 
Come on, ghost. Give me this objective, please. May have to push it down a little bit. I don't know if that's a great spot because I, you know, I walk past this and it doesn't go off. Look at that. Look how close I have to get to it. That's crazy. I think this thing might be bugged. I don't remember it having to be so close. Look at that. Look how close I have to be to that. Remember that actually. Well, anyways, come on. It's just gonna go down the stairs and like walk. Look, look at that. Go off. Uh, well, <laughs> might be uh, might be bugged. Might not be able to get that one. Well, that's okay. I think we just get out of here for for time's sakes. Uh, really a shame. Oh, let's go. Okay. Well, that thing had to get really close to that ghost, and unfortunately, down there in the basement, not a great spot for it. All right, but yeah. So, so if this is a shade, I could just sit here in the hallway forever, and it would never haunt me. So that's what we're gonna go and guess with, uh, just for the video's sake. I know it's been a little long, but uh, sometimes it can be a little long. Now, uh, you don't really have to worry about the pictures or anything. That's why I just kind of kept taking pictures of it while I was hunting until I get a ghost picture of it. Because you're not going to get any money off of that. Uh, the main thing you're going to get money off of is these, these objectives. You guess shade. So, and uh, of course it was a shade. Just like that, it's super easy. You get the five, the five, five to 10, the bonus. 25 to 9.35 561 of course you're not going to get the most you know the full thing for photos but uh, realistically if you're just in a time crunch and you're just trying to get done uh, that is the best way to do it and of course you get the same amount of xp as you get from actually completing uh, the tasks so i don't know if i can view the journal from this screen uh oh here we go okay so i can go through each guest type with you here um, I've already gone over a few things, but I'm just going to go over each one and how to test for it. So spirits, he's, the only way you can really test for a spirit is after it hunts, you start a timer that hunts within three minutes. Uh, it's not a spirit, but if it's close, like two minutes and 40, two minutes and 50, I'd probably just do it again just to see if it's about the same. Then I would just go with spirit. Uh, race, uh, that's why you bring the salt. <clears throat> you just pour it all around everywhere. And if you've poured it everywhere and it hasn't hit a single pile, uh, that, that means it, it's more than likely a wraith, but that's a hard test. You can also test with an EMF reader, which is also why you bring that with you. Uh, if, not, if you're outside of the ghost room and you get an EMF reading with nothing happening, that means it just activated its ability and teleported on top of you. However, that can be difficult as sometimes it could also mean it's a banshee and it's doing things outside of the ghost room because it's hunting you. Banshees are super difficult to really kind of figure out, but it's like when it does stuff around you and it's not in the ghost room. So first you'd have to know what, where the ghost room is. And that one can be tricky, but if you're playing with multiple people, it's a little easier to figure out. Uh, we actually did a prison run where that, uh, well, I was just in a closet the entire time and you're able to find their phone and everything else. You're able to walk right up to the ghost. My buddy was, and it wasn't, didn't care about him at all because it was hunting me. Um, so phantoms, yep, that's what I was saying earlier, is, uh, if you get a picture of the ghost, it'll immediately disappear, uh, but, uh, if you get a picture of the ghost, you get a ghost picture, and it's not in the picture, then it is, then it's a phantom, but if you can see the ghost in the picture, it's not a phantom, uh, but more importantly, when they're hunting, they are almost impossible to see, like, you'll know, like, it's invisible for a good portion of the time it's hunting, and you just say, well, that's a phantom, um, but getting a picture, of course, is clear-cut evidence. Culture, guys, uh, the test to get that one is you need to have, like I said, you need to have earlier is uh, you pull like maybe three or four piles of three or more objects together. You can also see your sanity go down by 2% or more. Or, or, yeah, every time it throws something, it'll drain your sanity. They also have a pension for like pretty much touching and activating everything around them. Um, but uh, they have a normal walking speed just like all the other ghosts I've covered so far. 
uh, gins. They do have a faster walking speed, and I have confused them with uh, Moroi's. Um, so basically, once they have a line of sight of you, and they see you, they will be uh, twice as fast as a normal ghost. Or almost twice as fast, maybe like 50% as fast, up until about 3 meters of you. And then they'll slow down. Now naturally, you don't really want a ghost to get that close to you before they start to slow. Normally, uh, you're, you're going to want to have a smudge stick. But uh, you can rule out a gen if it ever turns off the breaker box, which is a little difficult sometimes because not all the ghosts will always do that. Um, and it usually hunts at about the same normal time period. Um, but also, if you have an EMF reader on the... On the uh, uh, if you have an EMF reader on the fuse box and it activates its ability, you'll get an EMF times two, uh, which it, you'll, you'll only get normally if it turns the fuse box off. If the fuse box is still on and you get that, that means it just activated its ability and it's a gen. Uh, that can also be a hard test to do. Uh, better just have it really just chase you. Mares, you can perform a mare test by uh, turning a light switch on and off in the same room or, or the ghost room. Uh, it has an ability where it may it might turn the light off immediately after you turn it on. Although the Zeus Ghost can be a little hard to really predict. Um, so I usually just kind of wait until I think it's a mare or not. Uh, mares can't turn on lights. So if it turns on the TV or turns on a lamp or something, you know it's not a mare. Revenants are super easy and super scary. Um, if this, so basically in that starting phase when it starts hunting, you hear it going really, really, really slow. Or if, you know, it sees you, it starts speeding up like crazy. That's Revenant. You definitely don't want that thing to start to see you if you can help it as they get, they're really hard to get away from. Um, and then of course we did, we just did the shade. Shades are super easy. If uh, it doesn't start hunting, then until you know really late then it's either that or a dogen or a mimic demons uh, you can do a demon test the same time you do a, a spirit test actually so after using your smudge stick they have a chance to attack within 30 seconds uh, of using your your smudge stick every other ghost except for the spirit it's a minute and 30 seconds after smudging um they also don't really like crucifixes which is like they're, they have like a bigger radius on that as well, but those ones can be a really annoying. Um, Yuri's are really difficult. They're hard to really tell if you got a Yuri or not, but basically they do have an ability where uh, if you're in the ghost room, uh, they have an ability to slam doors. Um, it does not do it very often, but it also has a secondary ability where it, uh, it drains your sanity by quite a bit. Uh, so that one would be one of those more difficult ones uh, to figure out. Uh, so that's why we have the sanity monitor on to see if your sanity is draining, even though if you have like a candle on you or not. Onis, uh, these are like the opposite of phantoms, basically. So phantoms are usually like they disappear completely while they're hunting you. Onis are actually in their corporal form for most of the hunt. So that's one way to know if it's an Ani. Onis also are fairly active. So if it's throwing stuff and appearing and doing all that stuff, then you might guess an Ani. Ani's like to manifest, like they like to, like it's even right there in the description. Ani's like to show themselves. Um, so if it shows itself to you and you notice your sanity has gone down by quite a bit and it does that every time, then you might look and see, you know, well, it might be an Ani. Uh, see if it's, you know, not blinking like a normal ghost does, but rather it's on, on, off rather than on, off, on, off, on, off. It's on, on, off. Uh, yokais. Those are also super difficult. Realistically, the only way to tell if it's a yokai or not is just by yelling or talking around it through the mic uh, and having like a, uh, uh, what is it, a crucifix on the floor next to you while you're talking. Uh, if you're, because they can actually hunt within when you're at about 90% sanity or so. They have a normal hunting phase, so it'd be a little difficult to figure out if it's a yokai or not. I'm not a big fan of it because, uh, like I said, they're they're one of the harder ones. Uh, Hantus, they're another fast ghost. Um, sometimes you can actually see the ghost breath, even though we don't have any evidence on. You can actually see the ghost breath. 
in its ghost room, but it's a little rare. Uh, but you're probably going to know it's a Hantu when it starts hunting in the beginning because it's super fast and that eliminates a lot of ghosts right off the bat. Gorios, the only way to tell it's a Gorio is if it never leaves the ghost room. So if you pour salt outside the ghost room or if you have a, uh, if you have a uh, motion detector, that'll tell you if it's outside the ghost room or not. Uh, if it walks out, then you can just say, hey, it's not a Gorio, but that's one of those last things. Because, again, we have the settings set so that it doesn't really like to leave its ghost room anyways. Um, Myling can be a little tricky, but you'll know it's a Myling. I mean, it, it'll be so hard to hear until it's on top of you, and it could be really scary in these instances because you're not sure if you can leave your closet or wherever you're hiding or not because you're not sure if it's done hunting or not. Um, but, uh, yeah, basically the only way to know if it's a Myling or not, if, it, if you can hear the footsteps while you're far away, it's not a Myling. Uh, on Rio... The Unreal test is basically you're in the ghost room, you know where it's hunting from, you put your crucifixes down, and you have to put a candlestick right next to the crucifix. Now, Unreals can't hunt so long as there is a candle lit. Um, so what it will do is it'll blow the candle out first and then take a bite out of the crucifix. If it takes a bite out of the crucifix and the candle is still lit, then it's not an Unreal. The twins, so there is a little bit here. Um, it can be confused with poltergeist in some instances, um, but basically it's a super active ghost. Um, one twin will do one thing in one room, and another twin will do something in another room. Uh, so you kind of look out for that, and then also while it's hunting, you may have to have it go through several hunting phases in order to really know if it's twins or not. The one twin is slightly faster than the average ghost, and then the other twin is slightly slower than the average ghost. So if you see a bit of a difference there, then that's another way to know it's twins. Raiju is pretty easy. I mean, all you got to do is put a bunch of electronical stuff on the ground and go hide in a closet and just listen to the footsteps. If it starts to speed up after it hits those objects, then that's a Raiju. Obakis are pretty interesting. Up until recently, there wasn't a real clear-cut way to tell if it's an Obake. But... Uh, Basically, while it's hunting, it has a chance to change the ghost that it. So you see the normal corporal th form of the ghost, and while it's hunting you, it'll like for like a split second change into another one of their uh, ghost figures that they have and change back to the one it was just on under. I've only ever seen that happen one time, but it was pretty cool. Mimics are pretty easy. All I gotta do is take that camera in with you and see uh, if it's a ghost orb or not. Uh, Maroi's a uh, little difficult since when it first starts hunting, it'll probably start hunting there towards the beginning, uh, and it'll seem like it's normal speed. So that's why I do a few more tests before I take any sanity pills. Um, after your sanity gets to be about zero, it's about as fast as a Han 2 or uh, maybe like a Jen that's looking at you. That's why sometimes I can get them confused. But uh, uh, Another way to test if it's a Maroi is if you can get it to talk to you through the parabolic microphone since there's no evidence there's no way for you to get to talk to you on a spirit box if there's at least one evidence on it will always be a spirit box that is something else that's also just that i know um same thing goes for glorio actually if there's one piece of evidence there will always be dots um dugan dagan uh it's just like this shade uh you have to be really careful in those instances you can't just say automatically shade just because it hasn't hunted yet these things can hunt with the shade and uh, throw off your reckoning. So if you're in a, a closet or something, just trying to see, waiting for it to hunt, uh, you might not want to be. That's why I was out there in the living room or, you know, just preparing myself to be able to loop it. Face. These are the scariest thing when you first walk in, when you're at 50%. They are super fast and they hunt and hunt and hunt and hunt. Now, after a while, they'll start to slow down. And I'll give you a pretty good reckoning if it's a Fey or not because it won't be as active. So, there you are. That's how you pretty much do every single type of uh, test. A lot of it is just having the ghost hunt you and just noticing certain behaviors that the ghost might do. Sometimes you might get lucky. Um, I do, when I go to do things, I, you know, I get a little bored and I'll do like random. So, of course, I just did Tangle with Drive since that was going to be the fastest one to do in a video. But, of course, I've done every map. If you want to know how to do the bigger maps like Brownstown High School or Sunny Meadows or Prison, uh, I don't really spend a whole lot of time in those bigger maps if I can't figure out what kind of ghost it is or if the ghost room's super far away. I don't even really give that a, uh, you know, the time of day. 
rather I just kind of hang out near the lobby and see if I can't figure out what kind of ghost it is. I was able to ascertain a revenant on Sunny Meadows because uh, every time I hunted, it couldn't get to it couldn't get to me. It was too far away. And I get and I uh, and I had said, told myself it's probably not a myling either because it would have made itself over to me because I thought it was either a revenant or a myling because I could never hear the ghost. I, um, but after a while of thinking about it, I guess you know if even if it was a myling, it would have definitely made it wait over to me at some point. Um, in prison, we were able to do pretty well uh, against the banshee because I was playing with a friend and. Uh, and if you can get everything done on a bigger map like Maple Lodge Campsite, Brownstown High School, we got a Dogen on that map, so we're able to find the bone. Basically, if you can get the bone and all your uh, all your objectives done, you're looking at anywhere between like 1,100 and 1,300, depending on what kind of photos you take, uh, which is pretty big. That's more than the amount of money it takes for me to. Well, I don't have it on here, but it's about $900 to buy a full set for the loadout that I have. But yeah, uh, hopefully I learned something, taking something away. I know it's a lot of information to pack in, but uh, that would be how you'd use your evidence run. Thanks so much for watching the video. If you've made it this far, make sure you like and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you in the crucible.